Hey, what's up YouTube? I'm back with some more writing advice and today's topic is inspiration. Now, I've received a few DMs, messages, and I've even had a few conversations with people, you know, who've always wanted to write a story, who've, you know, been writing forever, but now they find themselves stuck and they don't know, they don't, they can't, it's hard for them to come up with a great story to write on. Now this um this video is going to be for you and it's also going to be for people who have already written something and they found themselves stuck. Those are pantsers. They didn't listen to me on the other video. They should have outlined. But I'm still going to help you out with this video. I'm going to give you five quick tips on how to find inspiration to either start your novel or to help you out of a, a jam where you've gotten stuck and you don't know where your story is going. And then I'm also going to um, end off with um, the inspiration behind my latest book, Book of the Anointed, which if you didn't know, is available online now. Okay, so let's get started with the first um, place where you can find inspiration. First place you can find inspiration is your life. Have you had lived an interesting life? Do you have a story to tell, advice to give? The best place where most people start with writing a story is their life. They write a memoir, which would be nonfiction. It's a straight account of your life, you know, your family, your friends. And then, you know, if you wanna make it fun, you can do a fictionalized um, version of your life where basically, you know, you reaccount your life, but you know, you change people's names, you make, you make twists and turns wherever your heart's desire to go, you go with it. And then not only with memoirs, do you know any tips? Do you know any tricks? What What is your job? You know, are you a, a, finance, a finance expert? You know, do you know good tips on how to save money? Do you have a bomb ass banana pudding recipe? These are all other things you can take from your life and turn it to a book. You can turn it to a cookbook, you can, you know, do a subject matter book on, you know, finance, how to do hair, glam, anything your heart desires. And then also, if you're finding yourself stuck, you can take something that happened to you in your life and put it in your own book that could help you on the scene. So first um, place of inspiration is your life. Second, second is one of my favorites and that's Pinterest. If you've never been on Pinterest, Pinterest is kind of like it's kind of like, it's, it's pretty much like Tumblr, and if you don't know what Tumblr is, it's like, for my older folks, it's like Facebook, but just nothing but pictures. And the thing about Pinterest, you have so many pictures, you know, from magazines, from TV shows, from all over the place. For me, what helps me, I get on Pinterest and I make all these different boards. I could, you know, see a creepy abandoned house, and I'm like, ooh, what happened in that house? There's a story in that house. Or I could see a cave full with monsters and be like, you know what? Maybe my character should fight a cave full of monsters. The the source of inspiration on Pinterest is limitless. Like there's so many pictures, there's so many things you can gain inspiration from. So I'm actually gonna all put a link to my Pinterest boards on down below. So if you're interested in Pinterest, click the link and follow my boards. You know I got some crazy boards for you. Pretty much fantasy horror. So check it out. Now let's move on to the third source of inspiration. Third source of inspiration is actually the news. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, the news? How can you know the news help me with my story? Just, just, there are so many things happening in this world, you know, funny stories, stories about dogs saving people. There's stories about, you know, Mothers killing kids. It's so much stuff happening in the news. Um, one of my friends actually saw this story about, you know, this woman. She got catfished and somehow she met the man she catfished and she married him. That's a story right there. That's something you can write a novel about. There's so many things you can find in the news. Okay, the news. Number four is going to be your subconscious. I know. You're like, what? Subconscious? You'd be surprised at some of the stories that could come out of the back of your mind. For me, 
I've always had the craziest dreams. Like literally, I've had some crazy dreams. Like I've had this reoccurring dream like I was in the subway and this vampire was just always following me. Then I also had this dream about this kid, you know, his imaginary friend was this demon and he, you know, it convinced him to do bad things and kill everybody in his family. You don't have to take it that far, but you'd be surprised, you know, what you can pull from your dreams. Maybe, you know, on the other on the other side of it, you know, you might have had a dream about a nice guy or a nice girl. You're going on a date, you know what I'm saying? Or you're having, you know, a naughty dream. That could be a source of inspiration for your book or a place, you know, if you're stuck to pick up off of, you know, your subconscious. And then also with that, um, one of my favorite um, writing assignments was, you know, we would look at a picture or we'll look at something random like a picture or you know just go outside and people watch and then just throw words and scenes together you'll be surprised how a story can just come just from throwing words together or from a picture together and the story can literally just voila just poof right before your eyes now we're in the last tip the fifth and final place where I think you can get great inspiration from is fan fiction. I know you're saying, what is fan fiction? Is there a movie you like? Is there a TV show you like? Is there a comic book series you like? Is there a fairy tale you like? Fairy tales alone, I can think of hundreds of stories that have come from Cinderella, you know, Sleeping Beauty, what if Sleeping Beauty was in the hood? What if we just, instead of focusing on um, what it is, Aura, we just focus on Maleficent, you know, Twilight? What if they weren't vampires and they were just actually nasty people, you know, who like to get chained and whipped? There's so many ways you can um, take something that's already out there and twist it and make it one of your own. Like, one of my favorite books slash TV shows out now called The Magicians is actually like a more grown up version of Harry Potter. Like basically in The Magicians, the characters, is, instead of, you know, if Hogwarts was like an undergrad for magic, they go to, um, <laughs> I forgot the name of the school, but they go to this school, which is basically like a graduate magic school. And in this story, they're um, American and they curse and have sex and drink and all this stuff. So it's like, Harry Potter, but the lit version. And so that goes to show you that there's so many different ways you can take stories that are already out there or something that you love and take it in a different way and just make your own story. Just, you know, do your thing. You know, that's a great way to build from. So now that I've given you these five tips, let me tell you about the inspiration behind my latest book, Book of the Anointed. Now, if you never met me or if you've watched my channel, you would know that I am a big horror buff I'm a big superhero geek like I love fantasy movies I love horror movies those are my thing and for me the reason why I wrote on Book of the Anointed is because I didn't really see myself in a lot of horror movies or let's be honest there was a black guy in the horror movie he was the first one that died he was the first one that died and even one of my favorite shows, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, like, what was it? The second or third season, we got a we got a black vampire slayer, Kendra. Then she died about two episodes later. And it's just like, really? Really, that's all we get? And so for me, the reason why I wanted to do Book of the Norn is kind of like a representation thing. Like, there's a lot in the story that... It's almost like a love letter to horror. Like if you love campy horror, if you love gory horror, if you love creepy horror, all of that is in this book for you. You know, my readers actually describe Book of the Adorned as Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets Boys in the Hood. I actually would say it's more like a modern version of it, but either way, they really enjoy it. And it has a very diverse cast. Because, you know, I have a lot of friends, you know, Latino, Asian, you know, kind of felt the same way like me. They didn't see a lot of, you know, differences in diversity in these characters and um, these horror stories or these fantasy television shows. You know, even one of my new favorite writers, Danielle Clayton, 
um, she has this book called The Bells. You guys should go check it out. She actually was a librarian and what inspired her to write her fantasy story was, you know, doing research on children's literature, she saw that there was such a big gap in diversity. And I kind of feel the same way. And that's what inspired me to write Book of the Anointed. So I hope this video has helped you guys in any way. You know, let me know what you're working on. Leave comments below. Hit me in my inbox. You know, hit me on Twitter at Demetorius1JD. And feel free to follow me on Facebook. That's it. Till next time. Bye.